is episode 70 of No Laugh Track. Uh, my name is Justin Severson. Thank you to Circle of Heat for letting us play their music there at the beginning. My guest today has been on this podcast before, the one time I wasn't on this podcast. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so? That was my one requirement. <laughs> I screwed up. I'm here this time. <laughs> I'm here this time. Dana Gould is here. No, there's no laugh track and no applause break. Nope. That's the other name. Mm-hmm. No <laughs> applause break as well. Yes. This is what it sounds like in my mind. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I quickly, before I forget this, I listened to your most recent podcast. Yes. Did Derek make you up a sissy? He didn't, but I may have one later. A sissy, they're a delightful drink. <laughs> I, I I wanted to try one because I was just at uh, Mo- what is it Moose and Sadie's? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. And I wanted a I wanted to have a sissy, but all the soda water was bottled, <laughs> so I had to drink straight lemonade. Which after you've been drinking sissies, is like just eating a lemon. <laughs> a sissy is a drink I'm trying to get going. It's lemonade and club soda. It's I, sort of like a fizzy lemonade. It's lem- it's limonade. Limonade that you, that you would have in France. <laughs> I haven't had one. I'm looking forward to my first. They're delightful. So welcome back to Acme. <laughs> Thank you. you it's, like, it's like a small lemon exploded in your mouth. <laughs> uh, it's great. To, I love it. I have been coming to Minneapolis for so long. And uh, every time I come, I, first thing I do is make sure that Sex World is still here. It is. Mm-hmm. I feel comfortable that some things never some things change. Never change. No. I've never been in. Oh. I've never been in. I do have a prediction about Sex World. No one has ever walked out of Sex World feeling good about themselves. Or, yeah. <laughs> no one didn't want to immediately take a shower. Yeah. No one walked out of there going, zippity doo da, zippity a. I met so many interesting I people. I think I'll hang myself today. <laughs> I have been in Sex World. Have you? Yeah. A lot of, I'm assuming, a lot of neon. Uh, latex? I mean, uh, fluorescent lights. Oh, yeah. Fl- yes, yeah. from the scene. Yes. Yeah. Very bright. Very well yeah. lit. Very lit. <laughs> very well lit. Um, I love the uh, the bodacity of the title. World. It's an entire world. Sex. So, so much sex. You'll forget you're on the earth. <laughs> sex HQ. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to check in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yep, I've been there. I'm still trying to uh, wash that off. <laughs> I feel dirty. So how was the show last night? You did one. One down? Yeah, one last night. It was great. Last night was actually very loose. I just finished. Um, I did my, my new special comes out November 1st on Showtime entitled I Know It's Wrong. And so now that that's to bed, I'm trying to move out the pieces from that show and start building the pieces for the next show. Mm. And... I get e- I get eager, <laughs> and I try to do it all at once. Um, so, like, there's a lot of new stuff. Um, there's a lot of um, some older things that I'm bringing back just to – because they've been out of the lineup for a while, and they sort of break up the giant blocks of the new stuff because once you get that really hammered down, yeah. it's just like this starts, and then it's 45 minutes, and I can – think about my laundry while I'm doing it. You know? <laughs> I don't know um, what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. It's just, you just know the music of it. Sure. Um, so that breaks that up and keeps it fresh. And so, and it was really loose. I mean, so I, was, I really uh, goofed around a lot, which I, I like to, you know, I, I, I'm not like Dave Chappelle. I don't like to go on stage and do seven hours. I like, I, 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 I like in my approach to my shows much in the same way that the Ramones approach to concert i want to blow your brains out for 50 minutes and then walk off stage nice yeah i don't want to let up i'm i'm going to walk out i'm going to put my throat foot on your throat i'm going to keep it there till i'm done and then i'm going to leave I, your drug use is similar to the ramones as well correct <laughs> no <laughs> but i once when i was in san francisco and i was a, a a substitute morning dj on live 105 um i interviewed joey and Dee. Dee and uh, I interviewed a lot of cool people. I interviewed John Cleese, Stephen King, um, a, a lot of people. And I interviewed Joey and Dean. They came in at 7 o'clock in the morning eating a vanilla Entenmann's cake hmm. out of the box and drinking a, a Polar, was a brand, P-O-L-A-R, oh. orange soda. Oh, okay. A lot of, they needed a lot of sugar. <laughs> they needed a lot of sugar. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm picturing the cake. They ripped yeah. me off a piece. Yeah, just that, <laughs> that rectangular. I don't know. Do you have Entenmann's yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, it was just that rectangular. And it was. They looked it's somewhat enticing, but they looked like they've, between the two of them, they looked like they maybe once eaten one vegetable. <laughs> I, I believe that. Their bodies mo- look more like uh, vegetables than exactly. actually eating vegetables. <laughs> Jerkied, they're, they're sun ripened to jerky bodies. <laughs> String bean arms. I know they really were. Yes. How did you get it? How are you doing radio? What happened? What? How did you screw up there? Well, no, I wasn't. Uh, I was a comedian living in San Francisco, and the morning show was the Alex Bennett show. It was a very t- who's now on Sirius Left, and Alex uh, had comedians on every day. He would have a, one or two comedians that'd sit in on the morning show, and uh, he's a great guy, Alex. I really love him. And uh, we uh, and then, you know, I was a frequent guest and I became friends with the station. And then Alex was like on vacation. And I was like, Do you want to come in one day? Do you want to sit in? We'll have a guy help you run the board. And then I did it and it worked well. And then I started to do it. And uh, it was it was really fun. It's you know, really there are, you know, there's guys like, uh, you know, I've talked to Jimmy Pardo. And I I bet if somebody offered him enough money in a morning radio job, I think he would do that full yeah, time. Yeah, it's, well, he he especially that. I mean, his podcast is a is a morning radio show. Yeah, you know, he has that rhythm and that sort of born to do it. Yeah, yeah not you though. You never. I I well, I'm too much of a. a my tastes go. I, I don't like to do any one thing mm-hmm. too long. Yeah, I think I would blow my brains out if I had to do that every morning. <laughs> but I don't know. It it, it you know it. it it depends. It's probably a, a negative in the, in my career. Like I was on The Simpsons, and you know I could still be there, just raking it in. But I was after seven years. I was like, I got I got to do something else. I I have this. Really, it was this. just that you just needed yeah, something new. I just had to do something else. I missed performing, and and, and I really missed performing a lot, and being able to go on the road, and 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 and, and not feeling like I could go on stage and do an hour. And like there was a you know after seven years of doing that every day and you don't really go on the road, uh, you know for a lot for three or four years that was nirvana because I was really exhausted yeah. from it and I needed a break sure uh, and I was just married and you know so it, well, it was really good timing to pretend I was an adult for a while <laughs> get up the, you know I had a wife and a house I get up in the morning go to work have a parking pass have an office yeah. go in have the, somebody brings me coffee uh-huh. uh but then uh you know that 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 wore thin and um i uh really missed you know in you know but the end of my run i was really rusty you know i would go up uh, during the like when i was on the simpsons a lot you know like when i've been there five or six years Patton oswald would often say like i'm going to san francisco why don't you come up in middle for me just to get on stage yeah and i go no no and he'd, come on come on and uh, and I would go, and then I would, you know, I'd get through it, but I would not. I was like, I'm so far below my level. Oh, of, wow. And I felt terrible. I just did not feel, I just didn't feel like myself. Um, and, and getting that back is really, I mean, a huge part of my self-esteem is just like, I know I can go on stage, pick up a mic, and, and beat, beat up that room for an hour. And you started comedy really young. 17. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of. It's who you are. Yeah, it is very much. Yeah. yeah. That's not a necessarily a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I still need strangers to love me in right. dark bars. But it's true, yeah. It's you true. survived this far, this long, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could be worse. Uh-huh. Uh yeah. Oh, I'm glad you brought up the Simpsons. That's uh They're still on. <laughs> Have you heard? They're still on. <laughs> I just saw that the uh twenty sixth season they just I'm sure you saw that. Did I you? didn't. Oh yeah. They announced uh they've agreed to a twenty sixth season next year uh-huh. and that's it i don't know you know i think it's what year at a time no, at this I'm, point well i think my guess knowing the parties involved they're going to get the 26 season and it'll be too close to 30 to not do it yeah they're going to sign on for 30 yeah and then they'll end it but who knows let's just say uh i mean n- not that you would even know what what they would really do but i was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day what if they, you know, like they still wanted to do it, but there was two like main voices that dropped off? They that'd could be never. It. That'd no, be it, right? Be it. Could never replace them. No, Jim Brooks wouldn't allow it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Really, the show is, you know, the show's, 
if Dan or Nancy or Julie um, don't want to do it, any member of the family, that'll be it. Yeah. If you know, if Hank didn't want to do it or Harry, it's more of a guess. But yeah. They're also both so tied to the show. I can't imagine them not wanting to do not. I can't imagine the show going on. Yeah. Do you? It uh, would sort of like be, you know, shows have a life and then they're done. And uh, you know, remember the last two seasons of the X Files mm-hmm. when David Duchovny wasn't on it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? it? Was Robert Patrick? Robert Patrick, the T two guy. Person, but it's like it's just no, no, no stop. Yeah. It's done. You're all fucked out. Stop. Even like CSI is a show I used to really like when William Peterson and yeah. the uh, and, and Ted Danson's fine. I, I, uh-huh. I guess he's on it now. I have no interest in watching it anymore. Why did, where did Bill Peterson go? I heard he was a diva. Oh, it, well, maybe that's why. I don't so know. much beard dye. <laughs> I never trust guys that dye their beard. Is that beard dye? Yeah, yeah. It's like there's no way your beard is not white. Uh, you're, you know, my you, your beard starts getting white at about thirty three. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, I, I I I'm still plucking them here and yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's like your beard's white. There's just, just black. <laughs> Do you watch The Simpsons anymore? I don't watch anything. Yeah, I, I watch, you know, I watch, you know, Breaking Bad and Mad Men and Walking Dead and uh, Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Nothing to... I rarely watch comedy because I just... It's my job. And then you know, I'll watch like Chris Matthews or, or Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell. And then I watch... Do you guys have Me TV here? Yeah. That's the old shows, right? Yeah. What channel is that out here? It's all I watch at home. I don't I watch, know. I like, Perry Mason and the Twilight Zone. <laughs> it's Dragnet. Yeah. I love it. I You're, love that that's, stuff. I, that's the stuff I grew up watching, too. Strangely, that's becoming really popular. I don't know how they're doing ratings across the country. I, I hope they country, do well. but it's, The shows are great, and it's just like, oh, my God, I remember this. Rockford Files? Rockford Files, and just like Emergency. I was watching Emergency mm. the other day, mm-hmm. and, you know, I watched Emergency every night when it was on when I was a kid. It was yeah. one of the shows that we watched. Yeah. And then I haven't seen it in whatever forty years or something, or probably more. And you, there's like a Squad Fifty One, KMG Three Six Five, and like I know that instantly. It's like, oh yeah, it's like so etched onto my heart, the hard drive of my brain. Yeah, you know, it's just like all these weird. It's like, oh yeah, that's where that's from. <laughs> Rampart. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know where that is here, but I I, I remember hearing radio commercials. Which is like a so. terribly like Rampart was like the big hospital that they would go to in emergency. Oh, was it? I yeah, Rampart. It's a, Rampart's a terrible neighborhood. <laughs> That's where the LAPD scandal was. Where, like, cops are taking bribes and beating the fuck out of people. Really? That was Rampart. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many people are putting that together in their heads. <laughs> uh, I have a few more questions about the Simpsons. Yeah, I don't care. Um, I know the answers. W- when you worked on the show. How many times would you see a single episode? Oh, well, you would see it before it aired. You'd see it. Um, you'd only see it finished once. But you'd see the uh, storyboards, which was just paper. The animatic, which is a pencil test animation of the show. Uh, the first color pass, the second color pass, and the final. So it would be five. And, you're, and you, you were busy doing which... And we well you do you everybody works on every part of every episode the, the episodes move through the writers rooms like uh like uh Henry Ford you know it's like a it's okay like, today we're breaking a story for next season tomorrow we're looking at the pencil test of a show for this season the day after we're looking at a color test for earlier this season then the next day we're going to go back to the show for next season and it's just things just move on like conveyor belt wow yeah it's the only way you can do it when you're that close to it, do you uh, do you enjoy the product? Sure, there yeah. is. The, yeah, you still laugh. You, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you know. And and it, it's, you know. And I remember watching I, for one re, for one. I don't know why, but the re, the episode was the. It was. Bart joins a boy band, and In Sync were on it. It was during the height of that. Right. And I forget the name of the show. Tim Long wrote it. And uh, there was a couple of bits in there that just made me laugh. I remember looking at the pencils. I was like, like oh, my God, this is we're going to release this thing like a movie. It's just going to kill people when it airs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just mean, it came one. Uh, uh, were, were you part one of my favorites of all time is the uh, the baseball episode. Is that before your time? 
Yeah, that yeah, was, way, that I was, was really was early. Season, I was season thirteen to twenty. Yeah, it's thirteen to twenty. Yeah, and that you were gone before the movie was made, right? Right before I was. That? that was right. No, that was right when I was right when I left. So you were a part when, of the movie. I wasn't a part of the movie, but I was there when they were making it oh, okay. in the next room. But uh, I left before it came out. In the next room? Did Literally they lock you in the out? Next room. <laughs> yeah. Stay out. Too many. No, no, it wasn't like that at all. And it, and it was many, many, many plots. I watched the Treehouse of Horror episode, the newest, most recent. Uh huh. What were the stories on it? They barely, Those are always my favorite ones. Yeah, they were really good. Uh, they, uh, who are the aliens? Krog and Klang? Or uh, they, no, uh, Kang and Kodos. Kang and Kodos, yes. They were barely in it. Ugh. Which I was disappointed. Yeah, I love those episodes. Yeah. But overall, it was. Uh, it... Some of my favorite, all, you know, some of my favorite Simpsons stories are all Treehouse of Horror episodes. The, the Omega Man parody from season eight, mm-hmm. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. That one's unbelievable. Um, the uh, War of the World, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds parody, for, that was also just astounding. Uh, those those special, those episodes are always just amazing. Do you remember how they uh, listed you in the credits on those? Yeah, I believe I was Dana Gould, G-H-O-U-L. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. sort of uh, natural fit. That's too easy almost. Tis. I looked one up. Well, and I, I was raised on, my home address when I was a kid was Cemetery Street in Massachusetts. Uh, so I was the we were the ghouls of Cemetery Street. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't their fault. They lived where they lived. Yeah. Was there a moat or anything? Uh, like no, that? I think I, I if I can I can I mean this uh, means nothing to our podcast fans, but uh, I have a photo. I lived at the intersection of Cemetery and Hope. <laughs> oh, I saw that you put it yeah. on. Uh... You put on, it on my Twitter. Instagram, yeah, my Twitter, yeah. yeah. That, was, that, was the, my, that was our address. Oh, that was it. I did see that. Yeah. By the way, you just reminded me. I saw a picture of you and Bob Hope. Yes. What, can you tell me what that was? That was, was. on the second-to-last Bob Hope special in 1994. Wow. Yeah. I have a big story about it in my in the current show and oh, also do. in the special. Yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. It was like meeting a uh, – it was like doing – it was like meeting a giant praying mantis. <laughs> he's what? Just, he's just this weird-looking dude at that point. Didn't want to be there. Really no. tired. Just oh, let no. him retire. Oh, no. Let him go. Did other people have that impression as well? We all did. But really? Was just like, his daughter was like, get out there, old oh, man. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. I'm tired. <laughs> Poor guy. Did you get to write a joke for him or anything? No, I just, I did, you know, I've met him. I, he introduced me, and I did a commercial with him, and... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bob Hope. <laughs> What's Mob City? I saw that uh, listed under your with your name. Uh, Mob City premieres December fourth or December eighth. <laughs> I'm not hmm. sure which one. Okay. On TNT, and it's the new series by Frank Darabont, who created The Walking Dead. Hmm. And well, he he created the television series The Walking Dead. Robert Kirkman wrote the graphic novel. Right, right. And. Um, Frank uh, also uh, wrote and directed The Shawshank Redemption and Green Mile and all those things. Uh, and it uh, is the true story of uh, the LAPD in the late 1940s when they were fighting the West Coast mob, Mickey Cohen and Bugsy Siegel. And um, it's sort of the world of L.A. Confidential. It's L.A. Confidential about eight years before L.A. Confidential oh, wow. late, in the late 40s, uh, like a film noir Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm one of the detectives in the uh, in the squad. Do you is, like that era? I love everything about it, and I am obsessed with that stuff anyway. Which yeah, is really weird. Okay, the book that it's based on, which is called L.A. Noir, no relation to the video game. Yeah, predated the video game. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, but it was uh, it was just a really fascinating story. I literally bought it the day it came out. Oh wow! Like, I knew that book was coming out. I couldn't wait to read it. And, uh, you know, James Elroy and all that stuff. I'm Mm -hmm. just really, really into it. And the fact that I got in this is just, as I've said many times, if nothing cool ever happens to me again, I cannot say nothing cool ever happens to me. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How about the clothes? You like the clothes? The clothes, a lot of wool, buddy. A lot of wool and uh, a lot of hair goop. That's, uh, I'm going to show you something and you can uh, can describe it. Sure. It's a, a a frozen frame from the commercial. Um, oh, oh, yeah? Yeah. That is, uh, I see a, uh, there's a handgun. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of goop in the hair. Yep. There is a, probably yelling. You've got some yelling. Even some, though there's some no audio. Blood. There's some blood. There's some there's, yelling. There's a bloody arm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my arm. There's some, uh, there's some, uh, yeah. 
debris. There's debris. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of debris. debris in my hair. There's a lot of debris. Yeah, it's in it's hair. just uh it's I can't wait. It's you the look like a badass right there. I do. It's the miracle of television. <laughs> <laughs> no, I play sort of the brainy guy um in the squad and uh you know the sort of the bespectacled brainy guy and uh because of that I'm the last person you would expect to see in a gunfight. Sure. So they put me in one. Have you uh, was you have a gun there on television? Real yes. life, you ever shoot a gun? Yes, I have. Yeah. Never had anyone. No <laughs> hunting. Yeah. Uh, well, my family all hunts. My brothers and my father are avid hunters. Um, I just shot a rifle when I was a kid, like at the dump with my dad, mm, like right. shooting in an old dryer, and <laughs> uh, and then you know I went to a target range like a couple times with a friend of mine. No, you're not packing heat now, are you? I might be. <laughs> How often do you get recognized? many definitions. <laughs> I don't. Just say no, please. Just say no. Uh, how many people recognize you from the Seinfeld episode? That's I get that more than anything. Uh, fragile. I was fragile. Frankie Merman, the Summer George. What a great name. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I get that a lot. The weirdest. The weirdest way I ever got recognized. There's two, two really really crazy ways I've been recognized in my life. One was. Uh, I was in the ocean with my wife, and we were swimming, and a guy went swimming past us, and he said, if this van's rocking, don't come knocking. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? And then my wife goes, that was from Seinfeld. And he was like, he recognized me as in the ocean. Wow. <laughs> I know, that's really impressive. Wow. Yeah, that's wet. Really, yeah, wet. <laughs> and then um, before, I, before this story occurred, before I met my wife, um, I was uh, my 30th birthday. Um, the girl I was dating uh, took me to an S and M bar to get paddled yeah. for my birthday. Whatever, Thanks. yeah, whatever. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't think I should be here because at the time I was on TV a lot. And she's like, Who here is going to care? I. She said, Who here would know who you are? And if so, who would? Who of them would care? Yeah, they're like, here too. That's a good point. So she's. A, I mean, it was really. I'm. I had four older brothers. I, uh, I've had enough beatings sure, in my sure. life. I yeah. don't derive pleasure from it. <laughs> but so it was kind of a joke. <laughs> you know, kind of a joke. Right. And she's doing it. And like literally this guy who looked like Trent Reznor and his girlfriend who also looked like Trent Reznor nice. uh, walked up to me and they get like two inches from my face and they're like, oh my God, you're Dana Gould. You're like our favorite comedian. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, nice to see you. How are you doing? Nice <laughs> Hands in your pockets, I'm please. I'm not really here. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. I know. That says you can't have it both ways. <clears throat> I just thought of one more Simpsons thing. Do you have any like uh, cool souvenirs that a Simpsons geek would? Yeah, well, they love give, to well, have. They give us. You know, we had these cool gift. You know, you get a gift every season. Like, um, like what? Like, uh, well, I have my crew jacket, which is a uh, you know, uh, it's a, a baseball jacket with all the patches on it, my name on it. That's cool. I have that packed away. I have my. Uh, um, they did like a print that was really great, which like. You know how the Simpsons looked when they on the Tracy Ullman show is mm -hmm. different from mm -hmm. the way they looked Absolutely. in the series. Yeah. So they did the Simpsons. It was like 1987 to nine. They did it like the Beatles red and blue albums. It was like the Simpsons, like uh, oh yeah, you know, it's like the early Simpsons and the later Simpsons. That's right. But they had identically posed in the, uh, in the looking down the building. That was oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that was great. And um, oh. Yeah, that was really cool. I have that, and uh, and uh, the, you know, like a picnic, you know, like a Bart Simpson skateboard and a picnic case. The picnic case, we it was actually really cool. It's like a backpack, but you open it up, it's just picnic supplies. But it was a Simpsons thing. You know, nice, just a night. They take care of you, they, and they still, I still get invited to the premiere, and they're you're you're in, you're in. Yeah, oh, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. That's good. I should go to the premiere. You should. Who's who's gonna die this season? Did you you heard about that? I have no idea. I really don't. I don't want. I mean, even if you knew, I I wouldn't even want to know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like somebody said Skinner's mom. I think that might be it. Does that qualify as a major character? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's not a major character, I don't think. But but you know, it was, they they report that stuff on Huffington Post. So it's like the, the 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 headlines are always like we shouldn't get hung up on one word. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, like, you know, it's like Chris Matthews schools Republicans, and then Clove's like, I don't think that's good. 
Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank God I saw that. <laughs> um, you know, so who knows? Do you need a piece of paper there? You're writing no, stuff down. Right. You I'm sure? I'm just writing Simpsons premiere on my hand oh. to remind me to RSVP. Oh, uh, really? And, but yeah, and, and, Bob, and that reminded me that I have to RSVP to Bob Odenkirk's birthday party. So now I hand That's is. one of your good buddies. Yeah. Better call Saul. Better call Saul. Mm-hmm. Are you going to try to get your way on a little g- guest cameo? But one of the reasons that we're friends is that we... Don't work together don't, like Well, that? we work together when... <laughs> The fates put us together, but nobody pesters anybody. Yeah, <laughs> is that kind of? I, well, I, I suppose that's the. Yeah, don't that's pester. The that's the norm. That's the norm. Yeah. Don't pester your buddies. Yeah. That... It's like you know, you know who, you know who, three people that are really tight, three guys that are really tight. Who? Steve Martin, Tom Hanks, and Martin Short are really tight friends, and but they don't cross pollinate in their work. Mm-hmm. They don't put each other in each other's movies and stuff, but they're really tight. Tom Hanks wasn't an amigo. Yeah, right, right. And they don't, you know, he didn't put Marty in Captain Phillips. And <laughs> He's definitely like a Somali pirate. <laughs> yeah. I was upset. None of the pilots in that movie wore mascara. What's happened to pilots? <laughs> they used to be so fashion forward. Does anyone say R? <laughs> I know. They weren't, not one of them was what I would consider a dandy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> what is your shirt? I My know, shirt. A terrible podcast question. It looks to me like it is the Mongo Archives poster for Miller's Crossing. Uh, no, but I love Miller's Crossing, so that is a good reference. This is from a website called T Fury that I buy a lot of T-shirts from. Uh-huh. Have, um, this is they, it's all like original designs and like by you know artists. This is just sort of like a, uh, this is all Indiana Jones stuff. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. If you look, there's the Ark. There's uh, there's two different there's guns the, that oh. he used. There's his hat. There's the medallion from Raiders of the Lost Ark that gets burned. The medallion burned. in the top of the Ark. That gets and burned into the guy's hand. What's under the, uh, what's under the Ark there in between the guns? What's that? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm looking a, at it upside down. That's but. great. Yeah. That's great. Now, yeah. I, I recognize that the hat was a giveaway, and then, and then I saw the eagles. I was like, oh, it's the Ark. Yep, that's it. Comedy, comedy nerd, and uh, Raiders of the Lost nerd sure. as well. Raiders of the Lost Ark, four movies, one good one. Star Wars, seven movies, two good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven, six, uh, six, movies. six movies, two good ones. Six movies, two good ones. Are you excited? Will you? Will you uh, nope. When they do the new ones? Nope. Even with Disney? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I love it. I think they'll be good. I think they'll be better than the last. Four, J.J. Abrams is great, but it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. Star Trek? How about Star Trek? Do you see those, the J.J. Abrams Star Treks? Yeah, I like them. Yeah, like I don't like some, you know, it's like Kirk is Kirk and Spock is Spock. It's kind of like, uh, okay. I don't like make out Spock. But I don't like, you know, I like. It's funny you say that because I'm yeah. saying the same thing to my girlfriend. Yeah. We watch it together. Yeah. Like, I don't need a love interest for Spock. Yeah. I don't like, I think Simon Pegg is great. Yeah. I love Simon Pegg. Yeah. He's in Mob City, too, by the way. Oh, really? Yep. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, they're good. I, but I like new stuff. Like, I love Daniel Craig. I think Daniel Craig is the best James Bond since Sean yeah. Connery. Yeah, he's know, awesome. I'm not completely uh, stuck in my ways. I heard you uh, mentioned the James Bond stuff briefly on your... Let's talk about your podcast that you do. Yes. How often are you doing that? Uh, I try to get one out every four weeks. Four, four weeks? Yeah. But uh, as you know, like my podcast is very complex. Uh, there's some production value there. There's some production I, value. Are you there. editing that thing? I edit it. And uh, so what I do is for my show, an average podcast for me, I record two interviews that are like an hour to an hour and a half. And then I edit out all of the chuffa and the dead dead air and bits that don't go anywhere. Yeah. And I divide that into like five or six super tight five minute chunks. Yeah. And then or, or jazz longer. music in between. You just yeah, I do that with two different interviews, mm-hmm. and then I put some bong- beatnik. I wanted to sound like beatnik kind of bongo mm-hmm. music, and then I'll intersperse both. So like you're auditing two different conversations at the same time. Yeah, I like you know at a party, like you're going back and forth between two conversations, and then I'll do that. Then I have a what I call the middle piece, which is just like a little bit of. Uh, history and some audio drops from something that I'm really interested in yeah. that I find fascinating. 
uh, like the last one I talked about, the Leuven Brothers, who are these crazy gospel musicians from the 50s that were, you know, they're gospel singers and crazy alcoholic, rageaholic. You know, like How did new, you find out about them? I'm just a music weird, you know, mu- music nerds know about the Leuven Brothers. Okay. And then uh, they had a very famous album called Satan is Real, which is the image on the new podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, the episode image. Yeah. And then uh and then I have a, a segment I do with John Ennis called Political Talk with Two Guys from Boston, which is a regular segment. And uh so you know, it's like I look at it like an album. I mean it's like it's a you can listen to it twice. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And uh the fact that it comes out once a month, you don't fall you, you can't like, Well, I'm eleven episodes behind. Like, nope. Every episode comes out. Everyone is special. <laughs> you know, enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I'm doing the Halloween one now, which will always be a big production number. Um, that one, I'll have some other stuff. But I, I like it. I when I I put off doing a podcast for a long time because I didn't want to just do a regular podcast. I yeah. wanted to like because I'm you know, like I'm really good friends with Mark Marin and I'm really good friends with Greg Barrent and Dave Anthony and I'm really good friends yeah. with Jimmy Pardo. Sure. And so I wanted to be able to look them in the eye when I saw them and right. say, like, I'm doing something different. I'm um, not doing what you do. I'm not. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. I want it to be worth it. And I have a, I have a, you know, I, I think in, in comedy circles, I have some cred. So I would like to back that up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't want to trade it on it. Yeah, like, no, no. This is also good. I liked it. Yeah, if you hear my name, if you see my name, you know, it's probably going to be good. So that meant a lot to me. Mm-hmm. So. And I'm fine with, you know, it's the fact that it doesn't come out every week and means that, like, it's probably not going to take off the way others have. Yeah. But, you know, the people who like it really like it. So, great. And I think slowly it builds. Mm -hmm. You know, I get great great feedback, so. Yeah, the one I was listening to, uh, Eddie Pepitone. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, he's. I have clicked subscribe for the record. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I th- I'm trying to get my friends um, Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski on the new one. Uh, they were on the last Halloween episode. They wrote the movie Ed Wood and Man on the Moon oh, wow. and um, a bunch of movies. And uh, they produced uh, Autofocus. And uh, they just finished filming uh, their new movie that they wrote called Big Eyes that Tim Burton directed. That is the story of uh, Bill and Margaret Keene who did those big eye photos. Oh, yeah. Those kids with big eyes. Yeah. It's a very interesting story. Uh, like, she did all the work, and he took all the credit, and they began, it's really fascinating. It's like the 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 treachery and greed and the big eye children painting business. <laughs> 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 but it's really great, and it stars Christoph Waltz and Amy Adams. Oh, wow. So, yeah, no, it's a real movie. Tim that's Burton a, directed it. That's a hell of a cast that's there. a hell of a cast, and I uh, love them to tell that story. And then, yeah, like that's a really interesting – like that to me is a perfect story. Like this mm-hmm. thing that everybody knows about and you didn't realize, oh, no, there's a crazy fucking story behind that. Yeah, yeah. Crazy fucking story that's, behind that's that. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Where do you – I don't know why I said those? fucking. <laughs> you can. Where do you record those? Uh, Just wherever in, you can? Uh, no, I always record them in the a little pool house behind our house. Um, but now I'm actually divorced and I don't live in that house anymore. <laughs> but I'm always there, so I, I still use the pool house. It's a very, very friendly uh, divorce. That's good. It's not a yeah. We'll we'll talk when we're done recording here. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it is what it is. Being because, an adult uh, is hard. Because I used to have a wife in a house as well. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Being an adult is hard. Uh huh. Yeah. It's supposed to be easier. At least that's what I thought when I was a kid. Yeah. No, it's not. Because no it's... one tells you what to do. When you're a kid, you look at adults. Well, you're in charge now. Yeah, you uh... got it. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and and I also think that, you know, not to get too heavy duty, but you right. know, people grow apart. And, you know, and and it doesn't mean you 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 don't like them anymore. It just means you be, you become different people. And I think a lot of people, I, I don't think that the divorce rate has gone up really i mean it has but i don't think it's gone up because people get divorced easier i just think it's like that the, it's become more acceptable absolutely before it was just a societal no no you couldn't do it oh absolutely and uh that's a lot of people stayed together yeah you know because they couldn't separate oh, yeah. and uh and uh so you know there's that but uh the kids are great that's what that's what counts you have kids i have three yeah we have three children and you know 
I, again, not to get too goofy about it, I live, as I've said in my act, talking about your divorce is like talking about your diarrhea. <laughs> it's very important to you. Nobody wants to hear anything about it, <laughs> partly because they're afraid that somehow they might get some on them. <laughs> um, you're not going to get, uh, there's no splashback. And, uh, you know, I live five minutes away. I, I'm there when the kids wake up. Yeah. I'm there when they get home from school. I put them to bed like I always did. Then I go home. And uh, and I'm there before they wake up again, so they're pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah, they're all right. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, I got a couple of really uh, silly questions to get you uh, get you talking here about some. Uh, I completely stole these off the internet. Perfect, perfect. I um, think the nature of the internet is that you can't steal from it. It's I just, mean, it's I, there. It's low hanging fruit. For that's a good point. Here's my question for you: What are you too old for that you do on a regular basis? What am I too old that I still do on mm-hmm. a regular basis? Mm-hmm. Oh, that I'm too old? God, everything. <laughs> everything. Really? I am so immature. Um, I Let me think. That's a really good question. I'm trying to think of something really ridiculous. Like, I'll just go and walk around a comic book store, even if I don't buy anything, just to kind of touch and be around nerdy stuff because you did at one point i, I always do it just it, it calms me <laughs> you know it's like it soothes me you never buy anything <laughs> no i do sometimes oh, okay. but sometimes i won't go with the point of buying anything i'll just go i just want to look at some nerdy shit yeah yeah and i was worried i was just melt down well you gotta that's why you bring the kids with and then it's you know yeah my 11 year old is getting the point where she i have all girls so it's not i have two girls yeah so my 11 year old is getting into is into comics yeah no my daughters know that uh when we go to like target for example the first place we go is to the toy section right the boys toy section (laughs) and then we go to the girls yeah yeah yeah. that's exactly (laughs) yeah you know (laughs) absolutely uh well if you think of something you know else um you bring that up again what is something did people hold in high esteem? You tried it, and it's really just mediocre. Something that people hold in very high esteem, and that I tried it. I found it was just, it was mediocre. Um, you could eat, like, so I can narrow that down. A movie everyone <laughs> loved. You thought it was, eh. I'll tell a you food? What, I'll tell you, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> a person? <laughs> As an actor, I find him not a great actor. No? No. He's, I don't even know that I've seen. A, he he indicates, which means that he tells you the emotion he's having by showing it on his face. Oh, really? He doesn't. He's a very. No, he's. I don't find him a very good actor at all. I I I find his performances very thin and surfacey. Not good. And he's like better a, film actor Michael Caine. I love Michael Caine. He just knows the camera better. I find that he doesn't. You know, he's very. The the camera is a machine that photographs you thinking, and you don't have to do anything for okay. it. I mean, you have to do anything, but you don't have to show anything. You just have to be it. Um, and I learned that, especially on Mob City, where I had to really, really act, you know, um, which is hard in that you have to only think it. But then there are ways that you have to think it. Okay. I'm in this situation right now, and they're going to say this, and that's going to make me feel this way. And that I'm going to how I'm going to say my line. I'm not going to figure out how I want to say it, but I'm going to feel that emotion, and then I'll say the line because I'll know the words. But you also have to realize, well, where am I coming from? What am I going to? What do? How does? How did my character feel? How did I feel before I came into this scene? What did I want? How is this changing what I want? If this is how it's making me feel, do I want these people to see how it's making me feel? You know, there's a lot of work that you have to do. Yeah. And then you have to process all of that. And then you have to go in and forget it and just be in the scene. And- like, there's this really brilliant thing that my acting teacher told me about called my called your new truth. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm a, you're a character. I'm a character. You're going to tell me some bad news and I'm going to get upset. But does my character want your character to see me upset? I might get upset and then try to hide it. Because I don't want you to see that I'm upset, mm-hmm. you know. So there's all sorts of things. It's never, and I find that Leonardo DiCaprio just yells a lot. <laughs> He's a Oscar nominated actor. Yeah, you know, it doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> George Bush was a <the> president. <laughs> You've won Emmys. I have. Yeah. 
That's for anybody who thinks the Emmys are important. I <laughs> should remember that I have two. Okay. <laughs> you said it. I would never say I that. I did say it. I would never say it. I say it a lot. <clears throat> Trophies. Hey, let's I, go. I need more trophies. <laughs> There's something I thought that people worship that I think is mediocre. Trophies. No shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Except for, like, you know, now that my kids are, you know, uh, kindergarten, second grade, now when they're going to start getting trophies, mm-hmm. I'm going to celebrate it like it's the greatest sure, thing of ever. Course. It's good when you accomplish something. You don't want to get a trophy for trying. <laughs> no. Yeah, everybody gets a trophy. Uh I did get one of those. I was a lousy baseball player. I think yeah. the only baseball, and every team I was ever on was not good. Right. I think I only have participation trophies for yeah. baseball. Good clapping. <laughs> Trophy for clapping. <laughs> you you did the book on while you sat the bench. It was very accurate. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. Here's a question. This is... Uh, <laughs> how did you discover masturbation? Um, by accident. <laughs> I think like everybody else. Hump in the bed? You're trying to fall asleep? I, I, uh, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Fair enough. I think it's pretty, I think my story is pretty, probably pretty common. Fair enough. Might have involved a picture of Lindsay Wagner. Who knows? Oh, re- okay. That's a good choice. Good choice. <laughs> Shows your age. This Pam no- Dauber. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bailey Quarters from KRP. Oh, yeah. Come on. I haven't heard that name in a while. Mindy, 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 Mindy. Oh, Mindy. (laughs) Oh, I like this one. Uh, Something you've learned uh, from your job as a stand-up that the average person probably isn't aware of. Hmm. Something I learned from my job as a stand-up that the average person probably isn't aware of. Um... Uh, the only people that think drunks are cool when they're drunk is the drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that qualifies. That's one. <laughs> uh, hey, we can do this one. You're divorced now. <laughs> well, in in process. Okay. Uh, if you could sleep with any celebrity, who would it be? Oh, boy. Could, are you comfortable answering that? Sleeping or having sex? Uh, sleeping, yeah, I just want to find somebody that's soft and warm. John Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. See, it looks very uh, soft. Uh, basically, who do I think is hot? Yeah, who do you think's hot? Currently. Mm-hmm. The current crop. I gotta tell you, the ch- the Hunger Games chick, she's pretty hot. Uh, uh, I uh, find her hot. Uh, uh, yeah. Her, her name. That one. Yeah. That was in the movie with... Somebody in the back here, help us out. What's her name? Jennifer Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. (laughs) J-Law. 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 Taylor Swift, because I'd like to have a couple of songs written about me. I think that would automatically qualify me. That would not hurt your career. Yeah. No. Yeah. It would not. That'd be great. Get me and go with my daughter. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Look who Danny met. Apparently, I did meet Taylor Swift, and I don't remember meeting her. (laughs) <laughs> does that do you, does that happen like with your daughters going like daddy did you meet her daddy can yeah you the, all the time but I was in all the time my daughter's a crazy Taylor Swift fan and I was in I think it was Austin Texas and I was doing a radio show and I was driving around with a PR person from the club we were doing morning radio right, right. and I said um, I was t- she goes how are your kids and I was telling her oh, my daughter's really you know my daughter my middle daughter's really into like you know One Direction and Taylor Swift and she's like oh did you tell her you met her you met her? And I went, I, if I did meet her, I'd tell her I met her. Yeah, why goes, would I say that? She goes, you did. You were, you were with me. Last time you were here, we met her. I'm like, what? Oh, no. Like, yeah, she was, we were in the green. She was in there, and you said hi. I said hi back. I have no memory of that. <laughs> I wonder if Taylor remembers. I'm sure she does. I'm sure it haunts her. I met the guy that was in that episode of Seinfeld with the van. Right. <laughs> Seems very nice. <laughs> oh, music nerd. Mm-hmm. What's the worst concert you've ever been to? Simon and Garfunkel. When? Why? 1981. I went with a chick. It's horrible. I hate Simon and Garfunkel. Her? She, who bought the tickets? Uh, she did. She did. Okay. Well, that's that's good. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go. To I was hanging with this. It was 82. I'm sorry, 82. And it was just like I don't like that music. Just because you don't like it. it I don't like. There's that no music. way it could have been good. Hi, the boxer. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. Want, I'm not gonna have fun at that. How about Paul Simon solo? 
I don't have a kind of fun with that. I like musicians that have a sense of humor or a sense of. I wouldn't go see. I would be bored at a U two show. Really? I, yeah. I like musicians that are. Not, they don't have to be funny, but they have a sense of humor about themselves. They. They have this, you know, the sonorous humor. For example, music. we'll name a few. Like, well, I, my favorite, I, Elvis Costello, okay. who's kind of like self-deprecating, mm-hmm. and his mm-hmm. songs are clever, and yeah. not everything is, in the clearing stands a buck. It's just earnest and ugh, mm-hmm. horrible. Yeah. You know, and you too is the same thing. There's not a lot of, everything is such a, everything's a mission statement. Well, yeah. I mean, there's one guy to blame for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Adam Clayton. Yeah, right. Oh, you, you read my mind. Adam Clayton, right? <laughs> Very funny. Well, I don't want to know. I shouldn't keep you here too much longer. I have to do another podcast. And you have to do another <laughs> podcast. But I'll be back here in three hours. <laughs> yes. Um, anything else that you should that we should mention that uh, you have uh, going uh, on? November, uh, November 1st, uh, I Know What's Wrong premieres on Showtime, Showtime. December 4th, Mob City on TNT. With uh, John Bernthal from uh, The Walking Dead, Jeff DeMunn from The Walking Dead, uh, Neil McDonough, a lot of great actors, Dan Roebuck, and um, uh, the Dana Gould Hour podcast on uh, available on iTunes. Mm-hmm. When you enough. when you go and subscribe to No Laugh Track, then you go and do the Dana Gould one, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll enjoy them. And yes, they're f- worth free and worth them, worth every penny. Mm-hmm. For the price of admission, exactly. You can't go wrong. Dana, thank you. Thanks, I was man, really looking forward to on. this. I've been a fan of yours. Briefly well, met hope, you several years ago. I hope you're still a fan after speaking with me for this amount. Of I've time. got some, yeah, issues. Yeah, we'll we'll figure things out, and I'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk again. Totally acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.